Boys and girls, here's Dick Tracy. Detective Inspector Dick Tracy, protector of law and order. When the theft of a large order of industrial diamonds was discovered, Dick's only clue was an ordinary-looking lapel pin in the shape of two intertwined hearts. For noticing the same design and the tattoo on a dead man's shoulder, Dick soon learned through the Federal Bureau that the theft was the work of Nazi fifth columnists. And Tess Trueheart recognized the lapel pin as the badge of an apparently harmless social club about which she once wrote a feature article. She agreed with Dick that the club was probably a false front for Nazi activities. But when Dick had verified this, he learned that Tess had disappeared. Actually, she's the unwilling guest of the Nazi ringleader, Brinker von Ludwig. But Dick doesn't know that. While he frantically searches for Tess, von Ludwig and his hatchet-faced female assistant, Hedwig, are huddled over a secret Schleswig radio. There, Brinker. Is that not our ship? Mine, Hedwig. It's a long wavelength. You should let Dolman do this. He is a radio expert. He's also extremely curious. I can manage. Yeah, wohl. But the less we use this radio, the better. Wait, I think... No. No, it's just a routine weather report. Suppose something has happened to the ship. Now, what could happen to it, Hedrick? Suppose the Atlantic Patrol has challenged it. Suppose they learn it is not a Swedish merchantman. Suppose... Why do you always imagine the worst? Because in this way, one is prepared for the worst. I will be already prepared for that. The ship's papers will be in perfect order. Forged, of course, but the Americanish will not suspect that. Do not underrate the Americans, Brinker. Ah... They make progress for an inch and talk like they've traveled a mile. But they have listening posts. If they intercept their ship's message to you... Let them, let them. The message will be harmless enough. Meaningless, in fact. I... No, I wish there was some other way of getting those diamonds back to Germany. This is the best way, I tell you. You say that because it is your way. And may I ask, Fräulein, what is the matter with my way? Matter with it? Do you think Gundel will go to prison for a forgery he did not commit? Gundel is a dunkoff. He'll never connect the theft of the diamonds with his membership in our club. You are so sure of everything, aren't you? What about this Dick Tracy? Will he not connect it? Let him. I have a sure way of dealing with Inspector Dick Tracy. Mm. You mean the girl in there, that reporter? <laughs> Miss Pruhart, yes. Once he knows her safety depends on it, he'll be reasonable, don't worry. She said Fritz Hoffman would be reasonable. How did I know Fritz would be a greedy pig? Imagine demanding a thousand dollars merely for acquiring diamonds with that forged receipt. And they threatened me. Imagine. Uh, I prefer not to when I remember what happened to Fritz. Uh, see that you do remember it. See that the same thing doesn't happen to you, Hedrick. Uh, they will never find me floating in the river. You need me too much. Mm. Stop questioning my judgment, please. I only question keeping the girl here. What else am I to do with her? You got rid of Fritz Hoffman. You mean to... No, no, Hedrick. The girl is called trouble drinker. Well, how can she locked up in there? She is clever. And so is her friend Dick Tracy. And so am I. Mm, if you were really clever, you would take your chances with her. The river is nearby. No, 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 I tell you. As long as we do her no harm, Tracy's hands will be tied. But suppose someone made a mistake. Suppose something did happen to her. Accidentally, of course. Meaning you? I am not infallible like you. I am up to make a mistake any time. Hedrick, if anything happens to Miss Truhart, I will hold you personally responsible. Oh, I do not mind. I will be responsible. You will be turned over to the American police on a charge of murder. On a ch <laughs> and suppose I should tell them everything. No. No, you would never do that. You are too good a Nazi. Yes, but I could. The girl is younger than you, prettier than you. You are jealous, Hedrick, eh? See that you give me no cause to be jealous, Frinker. <laughs> ah, you know that I do. What is all that? Quiet. Quiet. I think this is our man. 
How can you make any sense? Yes, Mrs. Hawkins, all right. Get a pencil at this. Right there, hand. Oh, I'll see it. Well, are you sure? Positive. What did they say? Here. Rather heavy. Expect reports early. Rather heavy. Ex- but this means nothing, Brinker. You think so, eh? <laughs> Good. Now I will apply. This is crazy, I tell you. All you said was clouds indicated towards you. Patience, patience. You will see. You're right. You're right. Will you be quiet? It is not supposed to. I take a uh, reply. I have it, Breaker. Have overlooked rest. Yes. Now form a word and we sign off. Mm-hmm. Good enough. Everything exactly as I planned it. Brinker, you must either explain to me or provide me with a straight jacket. Oh, poor Hedrick. It is so simple when one knows. Simple? Their first message said, Weather heavy, expect report early. You replied, clouds indicated towards you. And then they said, we'll head east now. Yes. It is crazy. <laughs> oh, no. You simply take the first letter of every word. The words themselves mean nothing. Only the first letters. Oh, I see. Then weather heavy expect reports early means W H E R E. Where? Exactly. And my reply counts indicated towards you. C I T Y. City. What's the next one? They said Bill Head East now. W H E N. You see? Where? City. Then? All right. You said no obstacles are north. N O O. Moon. Then you said, have overlooked rest. H-O-W. How? And my last message told them. Weather abating in time. W-A-I-T. Now, you see how simple it is? You read their messages and I'll give you my answer. All right, there. City. Then. Noon. How? Wait. Mm. Very clever of you, Brinker. And the beauty of it is, it sounds so harmless to anyone else. I will send Felix in a speedboat to fetch the ship's captain at noon tomorrow. And when he comes? I will deliver the diamonds, and we will celebrate the handsome profit. So, what do you think of my way now, eh? I will show you at the dance tonight. You haven't forgotten the annual, I hope. Uh, don't worry. You know, I think this social club has just about served its purpose, Hedrick. After tonight's dance, I think we will disband it. I find that lately it is more of a hindrance than a help. And especially with Gundla. I think it would be better if we simply dropped out of the side. Now, Junior, you were the last person to see Tess before she disappeared. Gee whiz, Dick. I did my darnest to find out what was on her mind. Because you know women. Yeah, sometimes I wonder. She didn't say a thing, huh? No, yeah, she was flying all over the place getting her suitcase packed. Did you help her do that? Yeah, some. What'd she pack? Oh, the usual junk girls travel with lipstick. Oh, powder. what clothes, I mean? Well, she was wearing... I know what she was wearing. I talked to her in her office. What did she pack? Well, she took that blue thing. You know, the one with all that lacy stuff An on it. An evening dress, you mean? Oh, well, that's what you call it. The one she wore when you took her to the United Nations ball. Well, go on. She took an evening gown. Yeah. And oh, sure, the satin slippers that go with it. Mm-hmm. Did she say anything about that uh, lapel pin, the two hearts? Gee, Dick, I don't think so. All she kept saying was, boy, what a break. What a story. What a break. Yeah, when I talked to her earlier, she showed me the article she wrote about this phony social club. Then she comes home and packs a party dress and... Why, sure, that's got to be it. Who was? Let me get out that phone. No, you've gone haywire. Not me, Junior. Tess was heading for that club. They're holding their annual dance tonight, and that's why she took a party dress. Why, it's got to be. Hello? Um, uh, excuse please. How about... What time is the dance tonight, Fräulein? It will begin, begin at 10 o'clock. Uh, Danke schön. Thank you. Should I wear my tuxedo, please? If you expect to get in, you had better. Jawohl, Fräulein. Gee, Dick, I didn't know you could spout German. Yeah, don't look now, Junior, but I can. Now, let's see. 
By the time I could hold a Pat Patton and get home and change into my tuxedo... Gosh, you're going to wear a monkey suit? I've got to, Junior. And Pat, too? Well, sure. They won't let us into the dance without them. Boy, I'd like to be there to see that. And just so Tess is there to see it is all I care about. Well, oh, boy, the thing the cop has to go through. You're not kidding, Junior. You're at least getting dressed up to meet Tess, but poor Pat hasn't even got a date. No, you're wrong. Pat's got the same date I have. You mean with Tess? Nope. The two of us have a very heavy date, Junior, with a killer. Now hand me that phone again so I can call Pat and break the news to him. I am worried, Brinker. What? Again? Now what is it? This dance tonight. It's open to the Chen Republic. Of course. What are it? The Chen Republic might include Big Crazy. Let him come. He's looking for Miss Trueheart. You won't find her. But he'll find a great deal more than he is looking for. If he thinks he knows what trouble is now, wait until he crosses my... Detective Inspector Dick Tracy will be back tomorrow, same time, same station, with more exciting adventures. Be sure to listen. This is Don Gardner speaking.